I would like to give a brief review of section 13.1, coloring regions in the plane with two colors. The main theorem in this section is 13.1.1, and it states that if you draw circles in the plane, then you can color the resulting regions with only two colors, and furthermore satisfy the property that adjacent regions are colored differently. In the picture here, we have six circles drawn, and we've colored the regions in red and blue, and adjacent regions are always colored one red, one blue. For the proof of this theorem, we'll proceed by induction on n, the number of circles. And our base case is when we've drawn n equals one circle in the plane. We have two resulting regions inside the circle and outside the circle. We need to draw these two regions with different colors. Well, that's easy. Use the color red for inside the circle and the color blue for outside. Now in the inductive step, we'll assume that the theorem is true whenever you have n minus one circles drawn in the plane. And our task is to prove that it remains true for n circles. So pretend we're given n circles drawn in the plane in the figure on the top left, n is equal to five. And we'll remove one of these circles, call it circle C that we remove, giving us the drawing of n minus one circles, here four circles on the top right. By our inductive assumption, we can color these remaining regions formed by n minus one circles with our two colors. And now what we'll do, as drawn in the bottom here, is we'll add in our last remaining circle. And we'll reverse the color inside this remaining circle. So if we had a portion that was colored with a dark color, now inside our newly added circle, color it light. Or if we had a region that was previously colored with our light color, now inside this newly added circle, color it dark. And we want to verify that this new coloring uh, preserves a property that adjacent regions are colored differently. So there's a couple arcs to cases of arcs that we need to check. So first consider an arc that's outside the newly added circle C. Well, the colorings on either side of this arc haven't switched. And so um, this arc uh, has one color on each side. Next, consider an arc that's inside the newly added circle C. Well, before we had light and dark, and now that we've switched the color inside the circle, we have dark and light. Um, so we had both colors on either side of this arc, and now we've just reversed the color. So we've maintained the property that one color still is on either side of this arc. Finally, consider arcs that live along circle C, as such as this arc here. Well, before we had the lighter color on either side of this arc, but now that we've added in this circle and reversed the colors inside, we have one color on each side of this arc. And that's the end of our proof by induction. We've assumed that we can color regions with formed by n minus one circles. And you, we've used that to prove that we can color the regions formed by n circles using only two colors. And therefore, by induction, the theorem is true for all n, all numbers of circles. Let me end this section with an aside. In elementary school, um, we would draw checkerboard patterns like this, and then on top of this, draw shapes like circles and triangles and rectangles, and then color these pictures, uh, as you see here, in this sort of fashion that creates a 3D effect. It looks like the circle is on top of the triangle, which is on top of the underlying checkerboard grid. And the aside I wanted to make here is that you can use a similar proof technique to prove that any such drawing um, can be drawn with only two colors. The way you do this is that you color the background grid alternating light and dark colors. And then as you add inductively add on one more shape or one more shape, you repeat the inductive argument that we just gave for circles in the plane. Thanks.